before you go, there's a documentary on on Monday night about Liam Brady that's been uh, quite a while in the works, and I think a lot of people are really looking forward to seeing it. There's a uh, such affection for Liam, uh, particularly I think amongst a certain generation of of Irish football fans for his brilliance in an Ireland jersey, but also yeah. for him being such a, a trailblazer at Arsenal. But then what he achieved when he went to Italy with Juventus yeah. and Sampdoria and, and Inter Milan. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure if you're involved in the documentary, but y- your first memories of of Liam Brady, what are they? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not in the documentary that that I know of. Anyway, I haven't I haven't done anything for it. Uh, but I first saw Liam. I was. Uh, at Leeds at the time, I think it was coming towards the end of the season. Uh, I wasn't playing in the match at Leeds, and Liam had just come into the team. I'd never seen him play before. I think he was only about 18 at the time, and he was absolutely brilliant. And I was player manager to, of, the, of the Irish team, and we were going on a tour of South America at the end of the season. And uh, I, I, I picked him for to go on the tour. But Bertie Mee was the manager. He never came back to me. And Liam never never found out about it himself. You know? But he, he, Liam, and then just shortly after that, he, he, he played, in, I picked him to play in the team, uh, his first international, again, I think it was against the USSR, yeah. uh, where we had a, a big win. And it was, it was natural to him to play in the international team. I had no, no problem about picking I anyone. Mean, I was only young for myself when I got into And they used to say, oh, international football is different to, you know, league football. How can it be? I never believed that. How can it's a game of football? And Liam took to it like a duck to water, as they say. Got on the ball. Liam was an absolute brilliant player. You know, he was, he was, he was I would call him a, a beautiful player, which is not usually an expression of like his balance on the ball, his control of the ball, especially getting it on his left foot, beating a player, going past it. Just beautiful to watch. Apart from the, 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 the manner in which he did it and, and doing the right things at the right time. Liam was, Liam was a natural, I'd say, from the time he was four or five years of age. Mm. And when he got into in the international team, uh, he was just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. No nerves, no nerves. Knew- Great players know what they can do. Now, they don't get nervous about anything. You get, you get a bit nervous before the match. But he was, he was a beautiful player. And uh, he was a great player for Ireland and Arsenal. And he, he, he was just a natural, gifted individual. Good temperament. Uh, didn't get too nervous. Never got nervous about anything, really, that I saw on the game. She would give him the ball in tight areas, beat players, score goals, especially on the left side, on his left foot. He was he was a beautiful player to watch, uh, and uh, he was he was he, he, for me he was one of the favourite players I ever played with in football. Why was he a good teammate? Well, he played for the team, Nathan. He wasn't a show off. The team didn't have to show off. What he did was absolutely brilliant, and you could watch him all day playing. He's on the ball. He could do certain things. Come inside, beat players. Uh, so he never. He, he was a good team player. I mean, I wouldn't be talking about him the way I'm talking about him now if he wasn't a team player. Mm. Don't, I don't believe in not, not players not being a team player. That's what it's all about. But Liam had the ability and the temperament and the knowledge and, and the intelligence to do what was best for the team. Always did. Never showed off, Liam. Didn't have to show off. What he was doing was, was absolutely brilliant and everybody loved watching him play. Because uh, some players really top-class players, Nathan, and, and they're not that good to watch, but they're effective. But Liam was, was brilliant to watch. I was playing with him. I, was, I loved watching him play and what he did, which was effective. It wasn't doing tricks or anything. He was just doing, doing what was, was supposed to be done. His temperament was good, good approach to the game. Top notch. I'd say, the, I'd say the, the, the documentary would be brilliant. Yeah, it's interesting you say he he didn't show off because I I'm too young to remember watching Liam Brady play and uh, my first memory is of watching 101 great goals and the excitement in the house when an Irish player would pop up and Liam Brady would always have five or six goals in these compilations and he was such a brilliantly creative player it looked as though that was showing off because he would score these exquisite chips and outside of the left foot. <laughs> And the thing that, that always stood out for me was he always seemed to play with his with his head up. 
that yeah. the ball was just stuck to his toe, but he never had to look down at it. He could dribble no. with it, he could take the shots, but he, he, he could almost just move his neck whatever way he wanted and keep his but head he, up. He'd know where he was before mm. the ball came to him. That's what, what, what great players do, and, and they call, I call it positional sense. They get into positions that when they receive the ball, uh, it looks like there's nobody near them. I've, I've played with poor players where after, like what happens with the great players, after their first touch, They've more room than they had before they touched it. And their second touch, second touch gives them even more room. Now, what happens with bad players is that the more they touch the ball, the less room they have, Nathan. You know, it's a gift in itself, to, first of all, to be in the right position. And the second gift is, is to have the control. See, what happens with great players like Liam, when the ball is coming to him, he doesn't have to think how he's going to control the ball. Right? So you can only think one thing at a time. So the fact that you don't have to think that, you can think of something else. Mm. Where am I going to put it? You know, with great players, no, before the ball comes to them, they know where the ball is going. If they say Liam Brady's on the left-hand side and the right winger is free, Liam would know before the ball came to him that that's the ball. Now, the second thing he has to have is make the room to do it. The easiest part is distributing the ball which could be 40 yards. No problem in that, uh, Nathan. It's making the room, getting the room, controlling the ball. And I'd be able to look up without having to worry about controlling the ball because a lot of players, particularly defenders, when the ball's come, they're worrying, am I going to control it? Am I not going to control it? So that's all they're thinking about. Whereas Liam Brady doesn't be thinking about it. He knows he's going to control the ball. So his mind is elsewhere to where am I going to put it? So he can have a look up and look around the pitch. Where's the most dangerous ball? If the right winger's on his own and it's in Liam's position, generally speaking, that'll be the ball. But some of the forward might be going through, and like in the international team, it might be Don Gibbons going through. He'd have that ball in his mind before he even got it, while it was on his way. Only because his control was so good. Mm. You obviously spent many, many hours uh, sitting beside each other on an RTE panel would he have stayed close in the in between years? So when when he went off to Juventus and, and made that huge move and became such a a massive part of a brilliant Juventus team, would you have would you have been in touch then? Would you have spoken a lot about football? Yeah, I would have spoken to him at the time he was moving. It was a big move for 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 Liam at that particular time, and uh, uh, I think at that time there was there wasn't a freedom of contract the way there is today, Nathan. And I think he 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 he. he he wanted to move, and I think one of the, the main people at uh, Arsenal and the boardroom, one of the big directors, said, you know, what, what are you on about? You know, at that time they wanted them to sign. Uh, that's it. When they were a certain age, Nathan, there, there would be uh, a thing on your contract that you could leave the club when your contract was up for, for X amount. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And Liam, the contract was running out, and he was in the first team. And they were mad at Arsenal for them to sign a new contract. And he knew at that time that the Italian club were interested in, in him, but they wanted him to sign a contract. They were sort of bullying him a little bit. And luckily enough, I had a very, very good friend, and I was quite close with Liam at that time. Uh, I had a very, very good friend who was very good to me, Ronnie Team, and uh, he was a top class solicitor in, in uh, Leeds. And luckily enough, I, was, I, I still was in contact with him when I left uh, Leeds. And uh, I put Liam in contact with Ronnie. And Ronnie looked after him from there. Right. So he pulled it all together because it was a big transfer fee as well. I think they paid £500,000 at a time when Italian transfers were just opening up to foreign players coming in. But also it was still quite unusual for, for English players to go to Italy and be a success it was probably John oh, yeah. Charles well, Liam, was, Liam was a great player he could English play anywhere Irish players, but players I think what English happened with, the, with, the, with the, 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 the money situation he didn't sign the new contract mm. Nathan so the contract he was on if a club played X amount the likes of Arsenal wouldn't have any control over it they had to let him go right that's why they were putting a bit of pressure on him to sign the new contract so that the, the fee would be much bigger and were you advising him to go to Juventus? No. No, well, funny enough, uh, he, he, when I was speaking to him at the time, he, he was, I think he was going to go to Germany. 
And I said, why, why do you want to go to Germany? He said, well, he said, I think the Italians, he said, they mark you very closely. It's a very close marking situation. And funny enough, Nathan, I found playing against the Italian teams, they were very, very close marking against the forwards, you know, the strikers. Mm. Oh, they'd be, they were really, really tight. But they didn't come tight on you in midfield. Strange thought may seem. I'd played against a few Italian teams at that time. Right, so you'd have a they, bit of time on the ball. Yeah. Like, they had a reputation for being close markers, but they were close markers of the strikers, and still are when you see them. Yeah. But if you see them in midfield, actually, they, they let you play. And I was lucky enough I was able to say, Liam, that's not, that's not the case. Actually, you get closer marked in Germany than you will in, in, in Italy. So I was all, not that I, I, I didn't, I wasn't pushing Liam anywhere. I was only giving him my opinion yeah. on it. I said, if I, were, if I were you, I said, if I was in the situation, I said, I would definitely be going to Italy instead of Germany. I'd say and, he was and, glad and he you gave him that advice. Sorry? I'd say he was glad you gave him that advice the way it worked out. Well, the way it worked out, yeah, but he didn't know at the time. Liam was very young at, 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 uh, when mm-hmm. he was going, to, going abroad, uh, Nathan. You know, I think he was, what was he, only 21 or so? Yeah, maybe yeah, a little bit older, maybe about 23 when he went to... Yeah, well, he was, you know, he was quite young to do it. But Liam was, Liam was always a classy, classy player. I mean, if I, was the, if I was an Italian team, I'd want, I'd want him in any team. Uh, so he was, I think he was made for it. You know, he'd be, a, he'd be a brilliant player anywhere, anywhere, and, and and a great temperament, and never lost control of himself. Never got big-headed, always, always lame. Uh, you know, he was just one of one of the lads, Dublin lad. Uh, never, never lost, never lost the, the, his head in any way whatsoever. He was, he was a credit to, uh, he was a credit to the game, a credit, a credit to himself. Yeah, uh, really looking forward to seeing that documentary on Monday night. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> uh, well, we might chat to you a bit more about it once we, we, we'll see if you get you get a mention at some stage. There's obviously uh, no backstage from the late nights after the RTE panel or anything, you hope? I don't think so, uh, Nathan. Because we made a pact. We never talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding when I say that. <laughs> yeah, right. You won't want to read Dumpy's next book, I'll tell you. Uh, John, great stuff as always. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>